Hi everybody. This I'm happy to meet you again today in our lesson. Our lesson today is going to be about reading. We are going to tackle text free time. Hi. This is our lesson today. We'll start our lesson and we are going to do as it appears reading. Remember in our last in our previous lessons we looked at two types of texts, text 1 and text 2. Today we are going to look at the third type of reading passage which is text 3. Text 3 we have number of words is 220 to 250 words and this is the longest as what you are going to read for this uh, term okay again I remind you please don't worry about the number of words you feel that they are so long but don't worry we will look at it at the text now and we'll see that things are manageable okay what type of text we have it is mixed we have narration as we said before and narration can mean like telling a story description describe something report, explanation, exposition, and procedure. So it's the same as the type, uh, type two, which we dealt with. The topics can be biography. And what do we mean by biography? It means the story life of a person. Let's say we have a, f a famous person. So we, ha we would like to know his story life. So we write. Uh, his story life in order to learn from it. This we, by this we mean biography. Historical event, again it deals with history, so some event happened uh, in history and we'd like to read and know more about it. Culture and society, again it deals with the societies and things happening and the, the culture of some societies. Professions, it's like jobs or work, work of people, education, and environment. So we are going to look now at a passage of an example of such type of text. Again, the topics, biography, historical event, culture and society, professions, education, and environment. Let's have a look at the passage. Remember when we said in order to know the uh, main idea of a text or the main idea of the paragraph, we are going to look at the first sentence of the paragraph because this is the topic sentence. And if we know the topic sentence, we read the topic sentence well, we will sure know the main idea of our paragraph and then our text. So let's look at the topic sentence in our passage or in our this first paragraph now. It says, Ernest Miller Hemingway is an American novelist, journalist, writer of short stories, and a winner of the 1954 Nobel Prize for Literature. So this is, yes, as you can see, it's a bit of a long sentence, but I understood lots of, of information. I knew more information. So the first point oh, we are going to look at is that our passage is dealing with a very famous writer and he is Ernest Miller Hemingway. And as you can see, he's American. So from the first sentence, I knew more information, okay? First, his name and then his nationality, American, and his job, novelist, journalist, writer of short stories. So let's look again at novelist. Of course, novelist means the person who writes novels. And novels, like, it's a form of story, but it's a bit, uh, a bit of a long one, okay? And if you look at the end of the word, ist, it means a person who does it. So it's a person who writes novel. Journalist, again, a person who writes journals. A writer of short stories. Of course, if he could write a novel, then he could easily write short stories, which is, which is a bit short, shorter than a novel. Also, he's a winner of the 1954 Nobel Prize. And for what? 
for literature. What is literature? It's there. Literature is the form of all the things mentioned on top. Let's have a look at the meaning of the word literature. So literature means written works. And of course, we have the example, which is novels, short stories. Uh, it can be drama, can be journals, and so on. As you can see from the illustration, this is Hemingway himself. So this is a picture of Hemingway himself while he was doing his writing. Okay, let's go back to the text. Then we move th through all the whole paragraph. After that, we have more information about the topic, about Ernest Hemingway in our case today. So the first sentence is always the topic sentence. And then when I move on, I find more examples, more information. Okay, let's continue and read together the paragraph. He was born he was born in 1899 and was and was the second of six children of Clarence and Grace Hemingway. For 14 years his earthly paradise was Wallen Lake near Pet Petoskey, Michigan, where his family spent its summers. He graduated from high school in 1917. He chose journalism instead of college and spent seven months as a reporter for Kansas City Star. So from here we know that he was the second, he was born, the date of, of his birth is 1899, and he was the second son of six children. Okay, and of course Clarence and Grace, this is, these are his parents, father and mother. And then he, of course, for 14 years of his age, so he lived in Michigan. And of course, he spent his summers there with his family. After that, he finished high school. And of course, when, if he graduated from high school, he will be like you after some months. Okay, so you will graduate from high school by the end of this year, hopefully. After he finished high school, he chose to do journalism instead of of uh, college. He didn't, he didn't apply, he didn't join any college, and he chose to, to work as a journalist. And he spent seven months reporter, as a reporter, reporting, of course, events, reporting news for Kansas City Star, which is a type of, uh, of uh, newspaper. He wasn't, then we move on, he wasn't accepted into the army because of his poor eyesight. So he volunteered as a Red Cross ambulance driver in Italy. So after that, of course, he worked for seven months as a reporter, and then he, would, he wanted to, to join the army. So there was uh, where he did not, ac he wasn't accepted, okay? He did not join the army because of his poor eyesight. And of course, eyesight here means his vision. He couldn't see well. It mean, it, maybe he needed an eyeglass or something. So what did he do? He volunteered. And volunteered means that he chose to do the work unpaid. Okay, So he did it because he wanted to do the work. He, didn't, uh, he, he wasn't after money. And he volunteered as what? As a Red Cross ambulance driver. And this where it was in Italy. Remember, he lived in Michigan, but then after that, he worked in Italy. And this was later to provide the theme for one of his most successful novels, Farewell to Arms. So because he worked as an, as, as an uh, driver of, uh, of, of an ambulance, he had the idea theme for one of his novels, which is Farewell to Arms. And of course, farewell as a word means like goodbye, okay? And in this case, arms 
Remember, the, he, there was uh, lots of, of war at that time. So arms here means um, like fights and wars and army and things like that. Let's look at the second paragraph. Also, we are going to read the first sentence in order to know what is the main idea of such a paragraph. In the fall of 1920, he became contributing editor of a trade journal in Chicago, and there he met H Hadley Richardson, whom he married in September 1921. Okay, so. Now, he, they moved from the, his earlier life, which is in 1917, and his work, and then we move to another period of his life, which is in 1920, and here we have the fall. What do you think the meaning of the word fall? Of course, fall in this context, in this situation, means autumn. The, the season, autumn, and for the Americans, they call the autumn fall. So he then worked as an editor, and of course, editor is the person who uh, edits journals, means he reads them, he puts more information, he removes information, is, he's like correcting them in Chicago. And there he met his wife, okay, and he got married in 1921. Late in 1923, he returned briefly uh, to Toronto. So in 1923, which means after two years, they went to Toronto, okay, they went back, where their son John was born. But Europe still gleamed in, in Hemingway's imagination as the place to be. So after living somewhere in Italy some, for some time, he then went back and then Chicago, he went back to America, then Toronto. Of course, you know, uh, Toronto is uh, in uh, Canada. But as he lived in these places, he had Europe, okay, in his mind, he wanted to go back and live there, gleamed in Hemingway's imagination as, play, as the place to be, to be living in. Early in 1924, he resigned from the star, returned to Paris, and launched his career as a serious writer. So because he was, he was thinking of going back to Europe, Remember, he, Europe still gleamed in his imagination. So he resigned, he left the star, and of course the star is the place where he worked, and he went back to Paris. And there he started, launched, started his career, his work as a writer. Then we look, let's look at the third paragraph. Hemingway's serious writing had begun with the Paris publication in 1924 of two small books of prose and poetry. So again, in this paragraph, they are talking or they are dealing with his serious writing. And this happened or this started in 1924 which took place in Paris, and he published two small books of prose and poetry. And prose poetry are two, two different kinds of literature also. Remember when we said literature was a writ the written work, like novel, journal, journalism, to, to work in journals, or short stories? Again, we have prose and poetry. However, his name was little known in the USA until his first volume of short stories appeared in New York. So again, he published his book in Paris, but in the USA, nobody knew him. His name was little unknown. They, nobody knew him until his first volume of short stories appeared in New York. 
Then people knew him. In 1945, Hemingway began a romantic novel, The Garden of Eden, which was not published until 1986. So he started to write this novel in 1945, but it appeared to the people, it was published, people knew it, okay, people read it in 18, uh, sorry, in 1986. So it took long time, okay, different years. Despite two airplane crashes that ended his second African safari, and of course we have the word African safari, safari is a form of a trip. His productivity continued in the late 1950s. He, st he still produced lots of work. Hemingway was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954. And this piece of information, we read it the first line. So, in, as you can see from the structure of the text, from the way the text goes, moves from the beginning until the end, we have at the beginning, they gave us the information, more information about Ernest Hemingway, when he uh, won a uh, Nobel Prize, and then at the end, which is the summary, conclusion of the passage, they repeat, they gave us again the same piece of information. Hemingway was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954. He then suffered from physical and mental problems, and then he died in his house. Okay, so this is, it's very important for you, for you to know the way the structure of a text go, goes from the beginning till the end, to help you in your writing. The first, we start by giving the most important information at the beginning, and then we give more examples, and then we move on, all our, again, our idea to move in the second paragraph. In the third paragraph, which is at the end, a kind of summing up to what I mentioned on at the beginning. So, and this is, this text is a very good example of that. Let's look at some other difficult words. So we had literature, and we said it's a form of written works, and we gave examples like novels, stories, short stories, prose, and poetry. Another word, paradise, which means heaven, and here in, in our case we have the Garden of Eden, which is, of course, Eden is the same as in our word, which is in our Arabic word, Eden, and paradise is heaven, after we hope all of us will go to paradise at the end. Gleaned means longed, wanted badly. So uh, remember when we said that Hemingway lived in America and in Canada, but still Europe gleamed in his imagination. Means he wanted to go back to Europe badly. He longed to go there. Launched and means began or introduced. Again, remember the text or the context where we saw the word launched, and it's when he started his first work, uh, his publication of his first work in Paris. Let's have a look at the questions. So again, as we said before in our, in our other lessons, the new type of questions for this text, we have complete the following table. So we, we are going to look at the table and find the answers from the text. Remember when the, that we mentioned that a table is a way of summing up all the information we have in the passage. So in, in our, in our uh, table, now we have name, and of course, if you look at the name, we, you know that you have to write the name of, of the person or whatever mentioned in the text. Uh, words, 
the prizes, whatever he did, good in order to be uh, praised to, to, to win such, uh, such a prize. Date of marriage, and of course date here means the timing, the date of when he was married, and nationality, the, the country he comes from. So the whole table, as we said, is summing up of the information we, ha we read in the text now. So we have name, awards, date of birth, nationality. Let's go back to the text and I'll give you a minute to find out the, in the information needed. Okay, so in order to find the, the pieces of information and fill in the table, you are going to do uh, skimming, okay? So first we have the name, and of course you have to skim the passage and to find the name of the person mentioned. So it's there, yes, yes, excellent, I heard you. And then you go for the second item in the, in the table to, to uh, fill in, which is of course the awards. Very good, you skim through the passage to find the words. Then you have date of marriage. You go through to, to the second paragraph where you find the date. And the nationality, you go back again to the beginning of the passage to find the, where, he come, where he came from. So let's look at the table together. So, name. So, what, what, what was his name? Yeah, excellent. Ernest Milling, uh, Miller Hemingway. So, his name is Ernest Miller Hemingway. Awards? Yeah, excellent. Nobel Prize. Date of marriage? And as, as you remember, we just had, it, had a look at it in the second paragraph. And you find it in the second paragraph, the second line. He married in September 1921. So this is the date of marriage. Yeah, excellent. And the last piece of information we need is the nationality. And of course, you can find it yeah, at the very top of the passage. He is an American. Very good. So if we look at the table, if you just read the pieces of information we put, you will know that most of the information we need about what we read in the passage. We have the name of the person is Ernest Miller Hemingway. So the passage is about Ern uh, Ernest Miller Hemingway and he won Nobel Prize. He got married in September 1921 and he comes from America. He is American. So as you can see, all these are facts about the person we read about. So whenever we find a table, it's always expressing and to giving information uh, which are facts. No opinion in here. Let's look at the second type of question, which is complete the following sentences. And again, this is as we mentioned before, this is new type of questions. You have a sentence and you are going to read the sentence and try to find the information needed. So in our case here we have number one, Hemingway's poor eyesight prevented him from. So let's look at the key words here in the sentences, okay? Poor eyesight and prevented him 
from what okay so of course the word him here the pronoun refers to Hemingway so and so of course we have prevented from okay this is a phrasal verb when we when we have uh, uh, a preposition from which which comes with another verb which is prevented and it means that stopped him okay Let's go back to the text and find the answer. Okay, so if you go through the first paragraph, towards the end of the first paragraph, he wasn't accepted into the army because of his poor eyesight. So, his poor eyesight prevented him from what? No, it's not working as, a, as an ambulance driver. No, 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 be careful. Look carefully. Look at the same sentence. He wasn't accepted into the army because of his poor eyesight. So, his poor eyesight prevented him from what? Yes. Excellent. Let's go back to the question, to the sentence. Yeah, from joining the army. So, his poor eyesight prevented him from joining the army. Very good. Let's look at sentence number two. John, his son, was born in... So, here we have, we are talking about John. Okay, and who is John? His son. And we have date of birth here was born in in what which place okay so his son here his refers to of course Hemingway okay so we are talking about John who is the son of Hemingway and he was born where let's go back to the text so in order to find the, the correct answer you are going to skim through that passage and find where is mentioned so his son John. And yes, if you skim through it, you will find it that it's there mentioned in the second paragraph towards the third line. It says, late in 1923, they returned briefly to Toronto, where their son John was born. So, where here refers to the place, okay? And what is the place? Is, yeah, Toronto. So, his son was born in, thank you, very good, Toronto. Let's go back. Very good. In Toronto. Excellent. Okay. Let's see what's, what we have after that. Number three. His second African safari failed due to. So again, our key words here is African safari and failed. And due to, we, want, we are looking for the reason. So, due to is another, is another word which means because of or because. Okay? So, his, of course, refers to Hemingway. Remember, all our passage is about Hemingway. So, I will just put, we will refer back to the text and I'd like you please to find the answer. Let me help you. Please skim, uh, uh, scan the passage and find where is mentioned airplane and ended and 
African Second African Safari. So we are looking for the reason, okay? Remember. Let's go back to the text, to, to the questions. Okay, so his second African safari failed due to airplane crashes, okay? So that's why he, his safari, his trip to Africa failed. He couldn't travel to Africa because of two airplane crashes. And here the word crash means accidents. Let's have a look at another. So this is the, the second type of question we are go, we, we, you are going to have in this in the coming first term exam, which is complete the following sentences. As you remember, the first type was complete a table. The second type now is complete the following sentences, where you have sentences and there are some missing information and you need to uh, put it in. The third type is mark the following true or false. Again, we dealt with this type of question in our previous lessons in our other passages okay mark true or false means you check if it is correct the information is correct or wrong okay number one Hemingway worked as an ambulance driver in France so we have to read the, the sentence well and look at the key words in the sentence. Hemingway, of course, worked ambulance driver in France. So let's go back to the, to, the, to the passage. I think by now you can remember, did he work in France or somewhere else as an ambulance driver? So the the passage is there yeah the information we need is in the first paragraph so he worked as a red cross ambulance driver in italy so it's not france Yes, it's false. Very good. Let's look at number two. Hemingway was awarded two Nobel Prizes. So, number two, Hemingway was awarded two Nobel Prizes. The keywords, as we said, of course, awarded two Nobel Prizes. So, do you think he had he he uh, he had two Nobel prizes or one? So the answer is false. Very good because he only had one Nobel prize, and it's mentioned in the first paragraph, and the last one also. Remember when we were talking about the, the uh, way uh, a, pa a passage is arranged, okay? So the, again, let me remind you that the first type of questions we had was the, the table. The second type of questions we had complete the following sentences. And then the third type of question we had mark true or false. Let's have a look at another type of question. answer the following questions so here you have questions you are going to find the answers 
as mentioned in the text. Number one, why wasn't Hemingway accepted into the army? Again, the key question for this, for this question, or the key word here, is why. We are looking for the reason. Why? Accepted into the army. So, let's refer back to the text. So, yes, by now I think you know how to find the answer to the question. You just dash into the text and find the answer. Excellent. It's there. He wasn't accepted into the army because of his poor eyesight. Yeah, he wasn't accepted into the army because, because of his poor eyesight. Very good. Let's have a look at another question, number two. Where was Hemingway's first short stories volume published? Where was Hemingway's first short stories volume published? So the key word here is where. Then we are looking for the place. Okay, Place of what? Place of publication of his first volume. Okay. Refer to the text. Okay, so one of our keywords here is the word volume. So, yeah, you scan until you find the word volume, then you read the same sentence or, or sentence above. So you will find the information you need. Yeah, and you can find the word volume as you can see in paragraph three. Excellent. And of course, it's, it, it's uh, where did it happen? Yeah, very good, in New York. So, his first short stories volume was published in New York. Be careful in such questions, you try to answer full answer, okay? So, you don't just gi give the answer as New York. Try to find, to write all full answer. You take from the, the question and you write your full answer. So, his first short story, uh, stories volume, was published in nine in New York. Was published, okay. And of course, instead we used his instead of Hemingway's first short stories, okay. So his refers to, of course, Hemingway's first short stories, okay. Volume, excellent. Let's see the the last type of questions you are going to have, which is choose the most suitable answers. Of course, you know, it's the multiple choice question, which I think by now you know it well. Number one, the word productivity in paragraph three means. So now we are looking for the meaning of the word. And in our case here, we have the word productivity. Let's look at the options. A, option. B, input. C, output. D, failure. So, I will read the other choices again. We have option. Does, do you think that the word productivity means option? I don't think so, okay. What about the word input? You have to think about it. Output, 
We don't know, maybe. And the word failure, what do you think of, uh, of the word failure? Do you think the word failure means productivity? Yeah, I heard one of you, very good, you don't think so. Let's go back to the text and see the word productivity in its context. Yeah, it's there, it's towards the end of the passage. In order, let me give you an advice, okay? In order to find the meaning of a word, you look at the word in its sentence, okay? We call it the context. What is the meaning in this sentence, okay? Because as you know, in English, every word got lots, lot, lots of meanings, okay? We have more than one meaning for each word. In our case, let's have a look at the word productivity together. We said, we have here, his productivity continued in the late 1950s. Okay? And Hemingway was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. So, so we have because of his productivity, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. So, what do you think the meaning of the word productivity here? Is it option? No. Is it failure? No. So, in order to, to look at such a question, we just have to delete two of the answers which we feel they are not correct. So A and D is completely wrong, forget about them. Then we have two other words which we feel one of them is correct. B, input, and C, output. So, productivity, something you produce. If you, pr if you produce it, then it is an, very good, output something which comes out of a person, okay? Out of your mind, out of uh, work, so it's the output. So in our case here, productivity means output. Very good. Number two, the word briefly in paragraph two means A, shortly, B, rapidly, C, generally, and D, commonly. So, again, let's look at the word briefly in paragraph two. And we are going to go to refer back to the text and find the meaning of this word. Of course, you have to scan the passage. It's not there in the first paragraph. And where is the word briefly? It's there in the second paragraph. As we said before, in order to know the meaning of the word, read the word in its sentence, okay? Know the meaning of the word in the context where it is mentioned. So we have here, late in 1923, they returned briefly to Toronto where their son was born. But Europe still gleamed in Hemingway's imagination as the place to be. So here, briefly. What is the meaning of the word briefly? Let's, ref let's go back to the questions. And look at the options. Is it shortly? Maybe. Is it rapidly? And of course, rapidly means very fast. Generally, commonly, yes, excellent. I heard one of you mentioning the answer. It's A, shortly, very good. So, in this text, you will have the t this type of question. Choose the most suitable answer. You have two of the questions on meanings of words, okay? So, you have to look carefully at the text and try to guess 
or predict the meaning of the word through the sentences, okay, through the context, as we mentioned before. Number three, the pronoun it in paragraph one refers to, yeah, I know that you love such type of question, reference questions, okay? A, his prize, B, his family, C, his novel, and D, his job. So let's refer back to the text and look at the pronoun it's and if they tell you in the question that it is in paragraph one you just go immediately to paragraph one you don't have to have a look at the whole passage in order not to waste your time so yeah that's it it's so in order to know what is what the word refers to you have to read the whole sentence and you'll find mostly that the reference is before the word, okay? So you have here, let's look at the sentence from the beginning. For 14 years, his earthly paradise was well in lake near Petoskey, Michigan, where his family spent its summers. So it's here refers to what? Is it Michigan? No. Is it Petoskey? Is it f is his family? Maybe. Okay, let's go back to the text. So, it's he refers to, is it his prize? No, because they did not mention anything about the prize here. Is it his job? Again, no. So, in order to answer such a question, try to delete or don't think of the options or the answers which are not correct. So, his prize is not mentioned, his job is not mentioned, so forget about A and D. And now, let's have a look at B and C. What about C, his novel? Again, this is not correct. So, the most correct answer here is his family. B. Very good. Four. So, question number four. The pronoun whom in paragraph two refers to? A. Ernest Miller Hemingway. B. Clarence and Grace Hemingway. C. Hadley Richardson. And D. John. Let's go back to the, to the text and find out. Yeah, so whom is mentioned in the second paragraph. So in the question, if they tell you, go to the second paragraph, you just very quickly look for the word in the second paragraph, read the sentence and find out the answer. So in our case here, we have whom. And of course, it refers to, as you can see, Hadley Richardson. Of course, whom he married in September 1921. So, the correct answer is Hadley Richardson. Very good. So, if we look at the, at the options, Ernest Miller Hemingway is not the correct answer. Clarence and Grace Hemingway, again, is not the correct answer. Also, John isn't the correct answer. Very good. So, this, this comes to the end of our lesson today. As, we, as you know, we dealt with text three, uh, text three, and we have the type of questions we, we looked at is uh, complete the table, uh, complete the sentences, also mark true or false. We have answered the following questions, and we got the last type, which is choose the most suitable answer. And as you can see in the multiple choice question, we have four questions only. Two, of e two is on meanings of words and another two on the references, the pronouns uh, and what they refer to. And also we have the words which we refer to, which with the meaning of the word. Again, in answering such questions, you try to delete 
or just minimize your options into two or maybe just one. So if you feel that the answer is not correct, just don't think about it. Thank you. Good luck. By this, we come to the end of our lesson. Wish you good luck and, every, and all happiness. And until we meet again next time. Bye.